First, we're going to talk a little bit about the switch gear today. Um, the type of switch gear that we have constructed for most of the communities now is fully automatic synchronizing switch gear. What that means is basically this will start and stop engines on demand can, uh, depending on what the loads are in the community. So that way it's putting the more efficient engine online during certain peak hours of the day and going back to the smaller machines at night when there's less loads on the system. To do that, basically we have our master control section. This master control section basically takes care of all of those functions. Inside here there's basically a PLC, a programmable logical control, that starts and stops and determines when engines are supposed to be running. On here we have a, a main dis display screen. This is basically uh, our viewpoint so we can see what the PLC is actually doing. And on here you can see it gives us our, our load capabilities for a generator. It goes over here, it gives us our power monitoring levels that we're at, which generators are actually online. It can give us all of our demand sequencing because we have eight levels of demand for power in this community between stepping up and stepping down on power. It tells us what, what our generators are if they're in preferred mode, which basically means that unit is ready and available to run. These are all part, parts of this function. We have a couple other screens on here. The system overview basically tells us green means the system is down and not running right now. Red means, like on here, these are, these are the circuit breakers for each engine, means they're closed, ready to run. The green, once, once you start an engine up, these go from green to red, that means that engine is actually running. On the top of our master section is our alarm functions. Basically, when you come into the plant, if we've had a general alarm, uh, basically the first one on here is a fire alarm. The fire alarm, if our fire system has detected any problems in any room of this building, it can actually shut the system down and you'll have a red indicator light here telling you that there, there was a fire alarm that shut the system down. The next one next to that is an emergency stop. We have an emergency stop button on the front of our panel here. Anytime that this is pushed, that will kill the plant immediately. So if you come in here and see something going on that, that is an emergency and you need to shut this plant down immediately, this emergency stop will shut it down right when you push it. There's no delays built into that. The next one on here is our system low water level. Back in the radiator room, when we were looking up at the wall at the expansion tank and looking at the level of the fluid that was in the expansion tank, there's also a level switch that's just below that. If that fluid drops below that certain point, say we have a radiator hose break on an engine and it just pumps all the fluid out onto the floor, that'll give a signal back to here to shut the system down also. The next one is a day tank critical low. We discussed that when we were going over the day tank. This is where that signal comes back to. This has a two hour timer related to it. Basically when you get a low level in your day tank for one reason or another, this, will, this alarm will come on, sound the horn outside, you have two hours to fix the problem or it'll shut your system down. Now you can temporarily silence this and add another two hours to it just by pushing the reset alarm button on here. If you know you can get the problem fixed but it's taking you a little longer than two hours, you can come in here, push the alarm reset, That'll give you another two hours to get that problem with the day tank resolved. From there, we go into our, our uh, bus voltage protection. We have over voltage, under, under voltage and over voltage protection. We have over and under frequency protection. We have breaker current protection. These are all associated with our main feed going out to the community. If something gets into the lines outside the community and causes a dip in the voltage, an overcurrent problem, or a frequency drop. This will be detected in the main breaker and trip the breaker offline to protect the village. From there, we go into our, our PLC, basically our pro programmable logical control. Our primary uh, PLC for this system, that's what it runs on normally. If for some reason we had a failure in that PLC, we would get a red indicator light would come on, and then our backup PLC would come on. There are two P PLCs basically in this system. We have a redundancy there to just in case one fails, the other one will come up and bring the system back online. If you have a failure of that one too, we have an indicator light on that. If that happens, the PLC will no longer control the generators that are running. And basically what will happen at that point is any machine that is in the auto position will start up, 
come online and synchronize to the bus and run in parallel. And basically, you're in a manual mode at that point. And your operator would have to come in, determine what's going on, and if he wanted to turn specific generators off, he would manually shut that one down and bring it down to just one machine to determine what's wrong with the PLC. From there, we go on to the heat recovery. Basically, in, in the radiator room, we briefly touched on that. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, the heat recovery, basically, we can tell which direction the flow is. Uh, heat recovery, no load, typically means that we have, we have the system is down and not, not running properly. Uh, loss of pressure uh, means we've lost pressure on our system. We've got a leak out on it, it's, and it needs to be repaired and pressurized back up. Uh, loss of flow, we have two flow indicators on our loops out there. Basically, they tell us that, that our circulating pumps are working correctly and moving fluid back and forth on the system. If they're not working, that, that light will be on. The other three, we have three spare lights in here that basically give us um, options to add other functions to the switch gear. Um, the amber lights that are on here, there's a difference between the red, amber, and green lights on this whole system. Red means there's a fault out there somewhere, and it needs to be cleared up for the system to run properly. Amber are warning lights. Basically, these can be on. They don't necessarily mean that, that you're in danger of shutting your, uh, the system down, but they're just giving you a warning or an indication of the status of what something is in. And then basically, we have green lights on the generator sections that basically tell you that an engine is running. That's, that's what the green light is for. On the lower section of our cabinet, as you work your way down, we have like the community feeder bus. And basically, they're green and red. Green means open, red means closed, providing power to the community. We also have in the middle of this section, we have a lamp test button. Basically, when we push this, this will turn on all the, all the lights on this panel to tell you that they're all working properly. This is just like a monthly check thing that you just come in, push the button, see that everything is working. In, this, in the center of this is our select in mode. And what this is, is basically our auto or manual for our switch gear. In the automatic mode, this thing will run and start and stop machines as needed. In the manual mode means we have to physically go start each unit up and put each unit online manually. Below that is our main feeder for our community. There's two styles of breakers that we use on these. Basically, we have the regular molded case breakers that are, that are similar to our generator breakers here. They can be on this too. They're just a regular breaker that have a lever on them that switch up and down. On this, this community, the main feeder, we have what is called a power brake breaker. This is an automatic breaker. It has no arm on it to flip up and down whenever it opens and closes. These are very noisy and can scare you when they first go off if you're not used to them because they sound like a, almost like a gunshot almost going off. But this, this basically has got a button that tells you that it's off or on on it. Um, we do have a manual charge feature to this which basically has a handle for manually pumping this up to get it ready to charge up if it trips off and won't reset. You have this manual arm that you can pump it back up, get it to re recharge, push the button, and it should close. Also next to this is our station service breaker. This is our feed to our station service that's in, in the parts room in there. Uh, this breaker should always be on, should never be turned off. One thing you want to remember when you are working around inside this power plant is the lower section of these cabinets is high voltage. It's 480 volts. You should never open up these cabinets and work on the inside of these cabinets while power is being, being produced from the plant. You should always turn the system off, tag it so it can't be, can't be started up whenever removing these covers and working in the lower half of these sections. Now we have our generator sections. Typically in our powerhouses we have between three and four generator sections. Each section is comprised of several components on it. The first part of it is our indicator lights. What we have is we have two rows of indicator lights. Across the top of it is usually engine related faults. These go from anywhere from the engine running to engine in idle to low oil pressure, high water temp, those type of faults. The second row down are electrical related items. Basically these are to do with the generation of electricity and you go into your over voltage, under, under frequency, failure to sync, those type of things are all indicated here. 
in the middle of our uh, engine control section is basically our generator controller. This is the unit that actually starts and stops our generators. Typically, it will be running in the automatic mode. This, this will be indicated by a little indicator light in here. Um, what we would do is we push that. That would light up. This engine would automatically start up and come online. Right now, we're, we're shut down so we could run through this. On these, these, basically, you have the auto start, a manual start, which to do a manual start, you have to push it and then push the start button and hold it until the engine actually starts. To stop it, you push the stop button and that'll shut the engine down. We have the emergency stop on here. By pushing this button, we can shut these engines down right now all the time. This is our contactor closure over here. This automatically closes when we start this machine on automatic mode. If we start in manual mode to close the contactor on these and pro start providing power, we have to push the on button. Once you push it, there may be a delay before that actually happens because there's a timing sequence in there. And it could take up to 30 seconds before that, that contactor actually closed. As we're looking at the display on here, we have several different things to note real quick. Basically, on the sides, it'll tell us our, our voltage of our phases. We got phase one, two, and three, which is the same thing as A, B, and C. Right now, it says uh, voltage C, or voltage B, I'm sorry, voltage two. That would be basically the voltage displayed across here. We aren't reading anything right now because this engine is offline. We can use this uh, select button, and we can scroll down through different functions of this generator. This is KW that the generator produces, the maximum current, uh, the date and time, RPMs. This, this continues on to scroll through many functions. Gives us our exhaust temperatures, our water temperatures, oil pressure, uh, return water temperature, K of ours. A lot, of, a lot of information for diagnosing these generators in, is in here. One of the other important key things in here is engine run time. Basically, this thing will count down from 250 hours down to zero. And once it gets down to zero, it'll come across with a banner across here that says service engine. That's our oil, oil change time. At 250 hours, we change the engine. This will actually give you an indicator and a banner that tells you that you need to be changing the oil in that machine. From there, some panels have what we call a flow scan meter on it. This meter right here basically tells us how much fuel the engine is actually burning during while it's running. As This is kind of a monitoring type type device that we can actually go back and look at the history of the engine, kind of calculate out what the gallons per kW usage are compared to. So we can come back and say, okay, yeah, we're getting you know, 12, 13 kilowatts per gallon out of this machine. That machine's running pretty good for us. It also has an hour meter that's tied into it too, so we can keep track of the hours on our engine. In the center of this display is our protection relay. This basically protects our bus from under over frequency, under over voltage, reverse power, failure to synchronize, and loss of excitation on our generator ends. Um, this is, these are all preset items that don't ever have to be adjusted uh, once they are set up in the field. Uh, our technicians basically go in here, they program all of the settings in here and test them to make sure that they function properly. Down here on this part of our section, we have our generator lockout for servicing. This is a keyed lock. Basically, we, anytime we come in to work on our engines, we turn this to the off position. What we want is to stop anybody from starting up an engine accidentally. We turn this to the off position, we open our breaker up. Now we can go out and do an oil change, do repairs on our engines, anything that's needed to do on that engine at this time. That prevents anybody from getting hurt while, while this engine is offline. Um, when you're done with your servicing, basically you come back in, you turn your breaker back on, you turn it back to the run position and put it back in auto and this machine's ready to run now.